This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. From the city so nice, we named it twice, New York, New York. Start spreading the news. I'm leaving today. No, I'm not, actually. I'm staying or I'm sticking around. I'll tell you in a moment why. Uh, uh, we were off for the last couple of nights, uh, and uh, we are sorry that we were. Uh, uh, hopefully, next week we'll do three nights. I don't know. I kind of I like just doing this one night, and, you know, and, this, and the Monday thing. But, you know. Uh, it's up to you. It's up to you guys. It's up to whether we get the kind of response on this program that uh, that we that we really would like to get. So um, you know, it's up to you to to uh, to. If if I don't get enough people calling this program, uh, then obviously there's no reason for me to keep doing it, right? Uh, on at least the schedule that I'm doing now. So if I maybe I do it one day a week, everybody will have a little more of a what can we call it? A, uh, 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 I don't know. They will, they will love the show more. I don't know. Anyway, hey, listen, we got a guest tonight. Uh, our guest, of course, is a guy that we have on uh, quite often here. Uh, and we usually just put him on because he disagrees with almost everything I say. And so that makes for more interesting programming than, you know, well, look at him. Here he is, ladies and ladies gentlemen. And oops, oops. Oops. Oh, Whoa. what was that? that? What's, I don't know. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! It's coming back. Coming at back. Me. There's something There's on something your end that's coming back at me. Back at me. Oh boy! Oh boy! Oh, boy. See, the, wouldn't, wouldn't you know we've, we've been, been off got, for several 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 nights? Several nights. Wait, a minute. wait a minute! Wait a minute! It says original sound on. I'll turn that off. How's that? Let me see. There we go. Right. I think that's it's better. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure. Let me turn this down. Yeah. What did what, did you put in your new board or something? Oh, I haven't haven't touched it yet. Oh well, then I don't know what that was, but that was that's Phil Meyer, ladies and gentlemen. It says so right there. If you can't read, that's what it says. All right. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, you know you've been gone for a couple of days. You've been in the court system. Uh, tell us, are you going to be living on a uh, subway grate? Uh, in or should I be looking for you in one of these tents? Uh, 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 all of the above. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know. Well, why, why don't you fill us in on what happened, you know? Uh, well, let me explain to people. Uh, we should go back to the very beginning, okay? Now, when I say we'll go back to the very beginning of this story, you would think that it goes back, oh, just a few years or maybe a few months or whatever. But no, we, had, we moved into this apartment slightly over 10 years ago. It's a long time, right? That's a decade that we've lived in this apartment. And uh, we, uh, we, uh, we, we love this apartment, and it's a great little apartment. One thing led to another. And about year three, towards the end of our first lease, uh, something happened. And what happened basically was that we were, um, uh, there was a whole bunch of problems that started to occur. And I don't want to get too deeply into it because it could get very boring. But the sum total of it was is that the apartment was rented to us by a guy who didn't own the apartment. He simply rented it like anybody else and was subletting it to us at double the amount of money that he was paying rent on it. Does that make sense? And yeah. here in New York, if you have a rent-stabilized apartment, and you want to sublet it, you can only do it for two years and you can't charge one penny more than you're already paying for rent, except for maybe 10% if there's, if there's furniture involved, okay? Uh, but he was charging us double that, you know? We were paying $4,200 a month. Uh, and at that time, we, could, we felt we could really afford it, so we did it, what? And it was a deal at that price. 
at that price, if, uh, what I've got here, let me explain what we got here. I've got, let me, apartment. You come in through the foyer, okay? So uh, it's a French apartment. It, well, it's a, it's a foyer. Uh, and uh, a large yeah, foyer, mo most, most people, this foyer is the size of most people's bedrooms in apartments. And can I say one thing about foyers? I'm a New Yorker. I was born there. Mm -hmm. We call it foyer. Foyers. Okay, foyers. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, but uh, 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 on the uh, right hand side is a big living room with a fireplace okay then you walk through a door and there's a dining room and another large fireplace okay <laughs> now you go to the right there's a big beautiful kitchen it's gigantic okay it's not small uh, and then we have a pantry and then we have a half bathroom then we have a hallway, and as you go down the hallway, on one side is a huge bedroom, okay? And then if you go further down the hallway, we have a fairly uh, large uh, guest room. And then if you then take a turn and go straight ahead, there's a bathroom, and if you get go in the door on the left, here we are in the studio. So I've got a picture of your apartment behind me. So which, which one is the studio? It's the one with the blue awning. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, it's twenty five hundred square feet. Yeah. Uh, and uh, as you say, forty two hundred dollars. That was a pretty good deal. You know, yeah. all the way around. Um, so. What turned out is that the guy then said, well, uh, I want you to leave when your lease is over in August. And I said to him, well, I don't know if we're going to leave. I'm going to check this out because I don't know if I need to leave yet. And I, I you know, I, I, we expected renewal. You know, I, in renting, I would say, wouldn't you agree that renewal, if you're a good tenant, you pay the rent, you're not a problem in the complex, renewal is assured. It, oh, if uh, the guy who rented it to you moves back in to his own place. So if, if, if he was going to move no, back but, in. But you see, we never signed a sublet agreement. What we signed was a lease agreement for three I, years. I understand. In San Francisco, yeah. what happens is a lot of landlords will use, uh, in order to raise the rent because there is uh, mm -hmm. you know, rent control yeah. issues, yeah. and uh, they're different than your rent control issues, but yeah. uh, uh, so what happens is you get uh, the market rent might be five grand for this one bedroom, mm -hmm. but there's somebody in there paying three. So what uh, the landlord does is he says, look, I'm moving my brother in there. And uh, you're going to have to move out in 30 days. Your, your lease is up. And uh, supposedly the brother's living there, but what often happens is... I don't even want to get into that. I'll tell but you They re-rent it. They re-rent yeah, it for it, market Because rent. what they're doing here in New York, in New York, that'd probably be somewhat illegal. But anyway... I'm sure. It's illegal it, here. Yeah. Um, what we were involved in was a case where we were charging illusory tenancy, which is somebody doesn't live here, uh, but he uh, kind of pretends to, but you know, he, anyway, we, f we went to, we immediately lawyered up and we found a lawyer who represented only tenants and uh, uh, was supposedly the best in the business. And um, I, uh, I and, and we went to see him and when we went to see him, uh, there was this uh, little meeting we had and we told him what had happened and you know that we we didn't want to move out but we're we're just checking to see if we, there's any way we can stay and he says of course you can stay i said what do you mean he says this is illusory tenancy what that is is when somebody is a tenant but he's not really a tenant right. and he then in a rent controlled in a rent stabilized apartment which this was he then does a sublet and charges all this well anyway he said Stop paying, pop, stop sending him your rent for the rest of this time, and you know we're not going to move, and you're going to you're going to stay there, and um, that was the beginning of the whole thing. Then uh, he sued the landlord, then he sued us, and this happened eight over eight years ago. Wow, you know. Over eight years ago, now uh, there there was one thing that happened in that time, and that was COVID, and that kind of held it off for about a year. 
Okay. Yeah. But we finally went back to court. And what was at stake was whether we were going to be able to stay here in this apartment and um, if we could make a deal to do it and whatever. So the trial begins. I got to tell you, don't ever go on trial. Right. And I'll tell you why. You don't want to go on trial because of very simple fact. It's Turn. boring as shit. I and mean, they were saying stuff in this courtroom I didn't even begin to understand. They have uh, made the law so complicated that I don't, I'm surprised they can even interpret it. You know? What did you say, squatter? No. <laughs> no, no. You know, I mean, we weren't... Um, look, we were sitting here going for eight years. We were saying, somebody just give us a lease in our name at a rent-stabilized price and we'll be happy to, to, you know, start paying, you know. But right now, we don't have a lease. And secondly, we don't have, know what the rent-stabilized price is. And lastly, who do we send the check to? The guy who was in the apartment? We send it to the landlord? What, who, do, who do we send it to? So it was, it was really very... So we didn't pay rent for, for eight and a half years. Yeah, well, yeah. That's, that's not bad in New York. It's not yeah. bad. That's a, that's good rent. But there was a hundred thousand dollars worth of lawyers' fees. Yeah, over that so, period of time. Uh, did you ever do the math? What's uh, forty two hundred times uh, eight and a half years? Well, we figured that out. Forty two hundred. What do you mean? Yeah, forty two hundred. Well, well, month. well, you can't really figure that because we had to go by what would would have been the rent stabilized uh, price. Yeah. No. If he. Oh. If oh, every, oh. 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 If, if he, I did that, yeah, we figured it would be uh, like eight hundred a month. No, 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 oh. no. But if oh. everything stayed the same mm -hmm. and he was able to rent you the apartment for 4200 oh. and he never raised your rent in the in the entire eight and a half year period. Well, what, wait a minute. I got an adding machine here. Let me, yeah, let okay. me bring my, my little adding machine There's up here. I could just put it right. I put it put it right in front of my face here. I'll put it between us. Let's see. How many months would you say that is? Uh, well, uh, what's eight and a half times 12? Well, uh, 12. Uh, 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 Eight and a half eight, times 12. Years. Well, what, what, I'll tell you what we can do. We can yeah. go 8.5 times 12 times times, times 4,200. 4, right. Okay. And uh, equals, yeah. that would be, uh, yeah, $428,000. Okay. So uh, 400 and twenty eight thousand mm -hmm. dollars and you spent a hundred and attorneys mm -hmm. and uh and any uh any deal on the rest of it no well uh, well we, we have to go on with the story oh, okay. here so anyway so far i think you're three hundred thousand ahead well if you figure that we paid a thousand a hundred thousand in lawyers fees and then you take the hundred thousand and you divide that by all that time it comes out to somewhere about eight hundred dollars a month yeah okay you rented one of those tents behind me yeah eight hundred dollars a month uh but we didn't pay any rent at all uh because who do we pay it to you know just just solve this thing so like there are three parties here but the two of them are really the ones that are fighting each other and we're sitting over like the bastard child on the bench waiting for mommy and daddy to get divorced you know right. Uh, and and we often scratched our heads and said, why are we in this thing to begin with? You know, it makes little or no sense to us. Um, we didn't do anything wrong, you know. Uh, we didn't steal from anybody. We're, we're just tr trying to do our best and get along with everybody. Anyway, so um, this thing goes on and on and on. Finally, we go to court this week. And um, on the first day, it's like everybody is intractable. Just, you know. Yeah. My lawyer does some kind of magic, which I can't even begin to explain to you. But he pretty well got everybody. This is where I suddenly realized I had a good lawyer. I didn't know what he was doing. But he, he, he had there, there was some guy on the stand from the landlord's. And so he said, well, I want to do a voir dire or whatever they call it. And he, he then 
asked some questions of the guy and started really attacking him. And I'm, I'm looking at his assistant and saying, what's he doing? These, these are my landlords. You don't want to piss them off, right? And he just went after this guy. What this did was this made him the big guy in the courtroom. And we, we left, and of course, we, what we offered was an offer of to uh, the guy who rented us the apartment. And I, I, I did this begrudgingly because I didn't want to pay him a penny. But my lawyer said, if you pay him, you will get, we'll get out of this, okay? So he said uh, uh, the deal was he takes $75,000, he gives up all claim to the apartment, and the landlord then gives us a lease at a rent stabilized price. Okay. Very nice. Well, except for the seventy-five thousand, I'd rather have that because I, you know, I could buy myself quite a few hookers with that. But anyway, it, um, um, it, it intractable. No, absolutely nothing. Well, after we got left the courtroom and after he had done his magic there in his performing. Uh, he gets a call from the guy that was that we, that we were willing to give the seventy-five thousand dollars to, and the lawyer said his lawyer says we're willing to agree to that. You know why? Because his fee was no. seventy-five grand. Uh, no, no. He, the reason <laughs> was the reason was that actually, and then the landlord's uh, uh, people uh, agreed to it, and they agreed to it because they wanted to get my lawyer out of the courtroom. <laughs> basically yeah, yeah. yeah. because but think he, about it because the, he, he was the guy, that, hmm? the guy that rented you the apartment yeah had made his attorney i bet you his attorney's fee was 75 g's and that's why that was the settlement no so no, we that was the, that was the, we actually that's what we offered okay that was our offer now, it was probably a move mm -hmm. on your attorney's because mm -hmm. he probably calculated that the guy had would take 75 G's to, uh, you know, to, to be paid on this. Well, I don't know whatever's between he and his lawyer. Anyway, yeah. the point is, well, the point is my lawyer just, at, he got it to a point where they all wanted him. They wanted that. He, they didn't want him there. Okay. He was just too good. All right. Well, if they didn't want him there, what do you do? Take lessons from me on your show? Yeah. yeah. So anyway, <laughs> the deal, the deal we got, is uh, we handed we're handing we're writing out a check we, we, we in a couple of weeks for uh, seventy five thousand dollars, and uh, the landlord has agreed that we have the apartment at the rent stabilized price, which is is a certain price right now, but it could go down because there's some question about what the rent stabilized price is for this apartment. Uh, so if they go back to when it was actually registered and stabilized and then add in uh, each uh, well, period. Well, you can't time. do that because what happened was uh, they, they're, they, I, 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 they're too many laws. Uh, you know, law, laws change constantly. One of the laws that changed is, yeah, they had to go back to the maybe 2003 when the rent here was $501, okay, and then incrementally bring it up to date. But because of laws that have passed since, you can only go back four years. So the rent stabilized price on this apartment, I, I don't know if I should, well, I, it's not like we made a deal on yeah. how much this apartment was, uh, was worth. Um, uh, we're paying what is the rent stabilized price. This is what the government says, this apartment mm -hmm. should be rented out for. So how much do you think my rent's gonna be every month? Uh, forty two hundred dollars. <laughs> I, yeah. I I think I think it's probably going to be twenty five hundred dollars less. Really? Yeah, I won't say what, but less. Not you know, but but uh, a couple hundred less. Uh, it less. Okay, um, less than I was paying for my apartment downtown, my one bedroom apartment. Wow. You know, so anyway, uh, that, that's you know. Uh, so uh, what the uh, how how much did the, you pay for the one uh, near Washington Square? Uh, it was like uh, Sixth Street was by a cheese store. What uh, uh, the, the one that I visited you in that you were with Naomi? Oh, that was down. That was on Fourteenth Street. That was no. That was Fourteenth Street. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. In those days, I think that was like three hundred a month or something. 
wow. you know, <laughs> back in the day. All right, yeah. you know. Uh, but anyway, um, uh, I, I got to say, there's a couple of things that I got to say. Number one, I do. Uh, uh, the guy who, who we were fighting, who rented us the apartment after it was all over, came up to us and said, you know, he said, I really wanted that apartment, but if I didn't get it, I'm glad you did. Wow. And uh, very much a gentleman about it, and uh, he has to come get some of his stuff that's here, uh, that that's left, uh, and uh, that's about it. But and the landlords, you know, I wish I could say they were a bunch of assholes, but they were, you know, they were, they were, they in court, they, when it came to coming to a deal, they came to a very, we're very happy with the deal. You know, we're very happy with the price, and it's a two-year lease, but all leases under, uh, you know, rent stabilization, you have to renew after two years. They can raise the rent slightly, but, you know. The interesting thing is they're getting now what close to what they used to get from the guy you rented from. Oh, so, yeah, 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 yeah. So to them, uh, the, the win is uh, they're collecting the rent. They uh, they got somebody legally living there, mm -hmm. and you know, it, and it's unfortunate that uh, I would imagine he's on the hook for uh, uh, two hundred thousand uh, dollars. Wouldn't he be? Who, you know, in who? the rent that he owed them. Uh, well, yeah, they're they're suing him for the rent he owes them. Right. Uh, it's going to be. I, I'm. You know, we're all out of it now. We don't have to go back. But in a way, there's part of me that would like to be there to see the rest of this trial, yeah. you know, because it it, uh, it 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 was interesting. But the fact was that yesterday, when we finally this whole thing was over, Marjorie and I walked out of the out of the courtroom. Uh, we both just looked at each other and had a sigh of relief. Yeah, you I, know, I would have after after all this time, eight right. and eight years and change. To yeah, go this through take, this takes a toll. This yeah, takes takes yeah, a toll yeah. mentally and physically on yeah. people. And I, stuff. I, oh. Yeah, and I said, you know, we can finally join the tenants' association. You know, yeah. I mean, it, but uh, um, and Marjorie today said to me, oh, "Well, don't tell this story on the air. Don't tell it on the air." And I said, "Why?" They said, "Well, it isn't finished. You know, we haven't we haven't gotten the lease, and we have don't have the uh, uh, we haven't sent the money to 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 the to the guy." And I said, "Look." It's set in stone. We, you had all parties swear to a judge that we agreed with the deal. They asked everybody down the line, you agree with the deal, you agree with the deal, you agree with the deal. Okay, then I say, that's the deal. This is a judgment. So, you know, I said, Marjorie, you know, they can't. They got to give it to us, you know, and, and the guy has got to release us when we pay him. So it, it, it's, it's really... Um, uh, I, 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 in a way, if, if you say, did we win? Well, you know, I mean, I had, we have to pay out a, a, a large amount of money. But on the other hand, I'd say we won. Yeah. You know, we certainly didn't lose because we're sleeping here tonight in an apartment. This is ours now. Now, you, know? you, you mean that the guy that was suing you actually wanted the apartment and wanted to go back there? Well, that's what he claims. Oh. The, the, you know, for for the sake of argument, uh, I I don't know whether he did or he didn't, but he has a house up in Westchester, and I don't really think he wants to live in Harlem if he doesn't have to. Yeah. You know, um, he certainly wouldn't ever rent it out again. That's for damn sure. But but what we're doing think. starting tomorrow, we're looking for a subtenant if anybody's interested. No, extra <laughs> <Mr>. bedroom. <laughs> you know. It it, it, it it we're just very we're we're delighted with the fact you know as you get to be our age um you you kind of become nesters yeah you know and especially for the last year and a half you know that you got all this practice being uh, inside yeah right but i mean it, it, we're nesters and um you know we i i thought that my biggest horror was we'd have to move out of here and how do i move all this stuff if if you just saw what's in this studio to have to move that you know would be leave a, huh? just leave it leave it let the next guy worry that, about I, it. that's what i we probably would have done most of it you know i mean it's just it's just too it would be too much and i told the judge in fact when we had a little meeting i said if we had to move i said i'm 81 going on 82 
I said, I think it would kill me. I think it would literally kill me to have to go through the, you know, that. I mean, the fact this whole process of this legal thing hasn't been good for my health. That's for damn sure. Now, uh, did did this affect your ability to rent another apartment if uh, if you would have lost this thing and had to move? Mm -hmm. uh, you go on a uh, sort of a shit list uh, no because we were su we were we were suing uh it was a, it was it was a, a different kind of action yeah. uh if a if a landlord sued us that would be the be another story um yeah you can get put on a shit list yeah um but uh just but even finding an apartment in manhattan i mean you got to realize if i moved out of here tomorrow to find an apartment at this price, yeah. it'd be impossible. You could rent an empty restaurant or an empty retail store a lot easier right now. Probably, uh, probably, yeah. or an office in an office building. Really, you know. Nobody's going to those. Yeah, uh, but I mean, it 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 it, it really is a, uh, a, a. I mean, I'm very happy with it from the standpoint that I think that the the price certainly is something we can absolutely afford. And in fact, it's cheaper than what I was, as I said, what I was paying downtown, and it's 2,500 square feet. I mean, come on, you know. Uh, I think if, uh, if people thought it was a steal when I wasn't paying rent, it's still a steal, kind of, you know. Yeah, it's world. But, but if somebody found this apartment and it were being rent stabilized, yeah. and they didn't do anything to it, and they just rented it out, they would rent it out for this price. So it would be a real find for somebody. But it's just that somehow we got grandfathered into this thing or whatever. But I, I really have to say nothing but nice things about the guy who, who lived here. Uh, who, who, you know, I said, it's very nice so after eight and a half years to look over a table now and not have to scowl at you, you what, know? What was his, uh, what was in it for him if he didn't fight and just gave up the apartment and said, hey, you talk to these guys? I have no idea. You would have to ask him that question. Well, his claim is he, he was robbed all those years by the, by the, uh, uh, by the landlord uh, because he, um, he uh, by the landlord because he, you know, he did, uh, what, 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 what was he saying? He it, it, they, he claims that they were overcharging him, and that uh, he really is owed a lot of money back. And so he was similar thing to what you kind of claimed of uh, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in the and so far as the landlords are concerned, I wish I, as I said, I could say something bad about them because after all, they are landlords, yeah. and we all learn have learned in our lives to hate the landlord. You know. Man, you gotta but, hate the man. But, but these guys haven't done anything wrong by us yet. I mean, now we're their tenants, so that changes everything. But they were they were very very good, very nice, and they were we were being sued with them, so we were kind of co defendants in this thing. So. Uh, is there any is there any chance they could turn that building into co op, uh, not co op, but uh, condos? Or? Yeah, absolutely. But I don't think they will. Not in my lifetime. And if they do, they usually buy you out. Well, what happens is if you are rent stabilized, yeah. you're allowed to buy at what they call an insider's price, which is I considerably cheaper. Yeah. Uh, and of course, if, if that came along, we if we had to go borrow it from a bank, I mean, we would we would absolutely do it. You know, well, you know, you I don't think you've ever used your VA loan. And no, uh, no I have you with no money down. Yeah. Yeah. No money. Yeah. yeah, but you know, it, but all I'm saying is, I think that uh, they—I don't know if they would ever, if they ever would plan on, on uh, uh, turning this thing, having it go condo. There's a lot they have to do, the landlords and so on. They have to fix stuff, and you know, it, it's it's Marjorie went through it with the place that she has, you know. Um, so I mean, anyway, it it it, it all it all we're, we're we're very happy. We're you know, this is something that's been. That we've been just, I'm very happy. it's been making us feel terrible over the years, and and uh, I'm, we're glad it's over. Hey, listen, yeah, it's listen, you want you want to from your, yeah, you want to stick around and just bring some of these people in here? All right, yeah, what do you got? Well, I got. Let me see here. 
I got to get all these other people here. Let me also give her my name. Uh, Let me see here. Right here. Wait a minute. I, I, I just said admit all. <laughs> go ahead. Admit all. Okay. Are you? There we go. There we go. We have Alan and we have Josh yeah. Wheeler. And in Australia, we have, uh, 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 we, we used to call him Doc. Uh, what was the name we gave you? No, you gave Winters. Uh, uh, Doc Winters. And we we always thought he was like maybe a male nurse or something like that, but you weren't, right? When we used to talk, I was. Oh, you were. Okay. Um, and uh, now he just sits down there in Australia, and uh, uh, has fun in Australia. <laughs> hey, Ross. To, uh, did, hey, Bill. Did, did, how you doing? Did the toilets really go backwards in Australia? Yes, they did. Uh, the yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I don't spend that much attention paying attention to the flushing of the toilet. But... You will, you will, <laughs> as you get older. <laughs> if you, if you, if, 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 if south of the equator, the yeah, Car water, Car the, effect. Yeah, the, the war, water goes down the drain in the other direction. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it's kind of like Mar a Lago. What? What did you say? <laughs> he, I, I don't think we can hear him. Who? <laughs> Uh, Alan, you know. Yeah, why not? I yeah, can hear you. Yeah, turn turn your turn your volume off. <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah, you know, Donald yeah. Trump visits, and everything goes backwards. Yeah. Now, hello, Josh. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, and uh, and of course uh, Jeff is here. Hi, Jeff. How are you? Yeah. Uh, uh, you're muted, Jeff. You mu muted, Jeff. Uh, unmute. Unmute. There you go. Oh, you muted again. Is there it, you go. Hey, congratulations. Yeah, oh, yeah. thank Ross, you. Now you went through hell. It's yeah. been, it's been. Uh, I got to tell you. I mean, every night I go to sleep before my. Well, my, when my head hit the pillow, all I could think about was this case, you know, and uh, that that was not. It was not fun. Dear, hi, Jeff. And oh. and in the in the last couple of days, uh, Marjorie was going to sleep and having nightmares every night about this. Hey. Kevin, yeah. you got your uh, audio coming through. Hey, congratulations. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, there we go. He turned it off. Um, but it yeah. wasn't Jeff. Hmm? It wasn't it was Jeff. Jeff. No. Wasn't uh, but no, it just, you know, it, it was, it, it played so. heavily on us, you know. I mean, you don't, you know what it is? As I say, at our age, we're nesters. But uh, belying well, that is the fact that you just... Nice it's nice it. to have a feeling that where you live, this is your apartment, you know, you're renting it and it's, it's kind of yours. It's your home. And I never felt that for the last eight and a half years. I, I, I felt it was my place I came home to, and it was nice that I had a place to rest my head like this, but I didn't feel I wasn't, it wasn't lie sitting here and going, wow, you know, Alex, and, were you ever worried they were going to change the locks? Uh, no, no, I was never worried in the whole eight years. And I, again, this is why I, I have nothing but nice things to say about the landlords. I didn't hear from them once, except in court where we were dealing with this together. But mm -hmm. otherwise, I, 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 you know, nobody ever came by and knocked on the door and said, are you moving out? You don't want you in here. Uh, this whole place was in contention. So it was, it was, a. they were, they were, uh, and, and so far as fixing stuff, all I had to do was call the super, and the super came up, and fixed it, you know. So yeah. I have no, no enmity towards towards the landlord at all, and and towards this guy, we kind of made up at the last moment, you know. It was like, okay, it's all over now. We can shake hands, and we shook hands, and then I realized he had a cold. Right. Can he get free tickets for the Knicks? No, no, don't. Let's not get into that. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what team he's with. <laughs> he's not with any team. I know, but uh, he was you know. a long time ago. Well, yeah. they, they they get tickets. You know, it, it's amazing how how time passes and you don't realize how much has passed. But he said, uh, "Oh, do you have my TV set?" This is a big uh, uh, fifty-inch TV set he had up on the wall. But it was so old that it only was 720, uh, 720p, and it didn't have an HDMI input. 
That's how old it was. And he said, gee, that set's, al that set's almost brand new. We said, <laughs> hey, listen, it's, cool. it's not brand new. <laughs> it's, you know, but please, I've saved it for you. I didn't want to, I didn't want to throw it out because I didn't want to have you say to me, where's my TV set? You know, so it's there ready and waiting for you, you know. Probably wasn't happy about that. Hmm? Now he's got to, he wasn't happy about that. Now he's got to pick it up. Yeah. All he wanted to do was say, "Hey, look, you owe me four thousand well, dollars for a TV." Well, he had uh, he had, he let us have the washer and dryer, and he he uh, there's some, you spent a thousand dollars to fix there. there yeah, <laughs> I and I told him we spent a thousand dollars to fix that, and if we hadn't fixed it, you just have a piece of junk. Okay, yeah. um, uh, and he said, "Okay, keep it." Okay, and. Uh, uh, then he was talking about the fans we had in the kitchen, and we said, uh, "Well, no, yeah, can we buy those from you?" And we made a deal that we we're going to we're probably going to buy some of the stuff from him, uh, but, and give the money to a, a, a charity that he. Wait a minute, a fan, if it's permanently installed, is part of the. Apartment. I believe so. I believe you're right. Uh, yeah. There was something else, and we said we wanted it, and he said, uh, "You know, okay, well, you know." Um, how much we said we'll, we'll give a hundred dollars to your charity for that and then when he talks about the other stuff we'll probably offer him he wants the, his air conditioners back two of which we don't use so yeah. uh that's okay with us you know if he wants them back but if i'm willing to give him a, a hundred bucks for all the air conditioners there you know it's not like these are new yeah you know uh, oh, oh, this was what it was. We, we, he, he said he put it in the refrigerator in the stove. And we said we'd give him $100 to his charity if he'd let us just keep the refrigerator in the stove. Although we plan on getting rid of the refrigerator in the stove. Um, you know, it's time for those. You know, all these things you got to realize when he first put the stuff in here, it's 2003. So wow. tell him to pick up the refrigerator in the stove and this would have to pay to dump it. Well... You know, uh, any place you buy a refrigerator from, they'll haul the old one away for you. Yeah. Okay. For a couple of bucks, they'll haul it away. So. Yeah, that's why I'm saying you're, you're money ahead if he takes it. Well, yeah, but then I'm sitting there without a refrigerator. Uh, no, no. <laughs> Push it out in the hallway. Yeah, but I mean, but anyway, so, you know, we, we're, we're working it all out slowly but surely. And, uh, you know, I mean, we don't use the air conditioners in the in the what do you call it the um, uh, the dining room and the and the living room when it gets too hot we just never even go out there yeah so well uh, if you use them you wouldn't be able to <laughs> right. use anything else in the apartment right uh, well yeah we there's a there's an electric problem here which I've got, well, I got see I, there are things I wanted them to attend to uh, but yeah, you know, I really have the rights to say we really got to do something about this, you know. And now I can. And one of them is the electric in this apartment. Yeah. It's just every time I, you know, take a pee, the, we blow a fuse in the basement, you know. It's, it's, <laughs> That's because you keep peeing on the circuit breaker. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and you got to realize this building, right, is 120 years old. Wow. So if the electric... It was almost new when you were born. Yep. <laughs> when the electricity was put in here. It was put in, I think, in 1920. You know, electricity didn't was this was all these apartments had yeah. gas lighting. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. You know, so when if you think about that, any electrical system that was put in, you know, was you know an afterthought. So yeah, knob and tube and very uh, limited uh, uh, amount of amps. Yeah. Yeah. Ben Franklin on the first floor. What? What'd you say? Wasn't Ben Franklin on the first floor? Yeah, he was on the first floor. <laughs> and, he's, and, he's, and he's arguing with uh, Thomas Jefferson on the floor above. The only yeah. problem that we've never been able to get fixed, and everybody else has the same problem, is on the eighth floor. Our our water pressure is just uh, horrible. You, you can get uh, a pump uh, that you put on a sink, and what it does is uh, it... it pumps up water and puts it sort of in a reservoir so you get the pressure. Really? What's that, it called? Do you know? Uh, I'll ask the guy that told me about it because uh, I needed one on my fifth floor in my old house. Yeah. Bruce. And uh, yeah. Uh, Bruce. Uh, kind of, yeah. What, what, did you say there's a name for it, Kevin? Booster pump or booster reservoir. Yeah. Yeah. Pressure. 
pressure mm-hmm. um, uh, storage container or something like that? Well, not a, so much a container as it's a it's a pump, and it just goes under the sink. Yeah, and I, what it does is oh, it I thought it was a penis pump. Yeah, yeah right. the research valve. Yeah. That's the yeah. research. Yeah, but you gotta have to. You gotta have something bigger than that for an apartment building. Yeah. Well, he doesn't need it for the whole building. He just needs it for his apartment. Right. We, 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 just our apartment. Yeah, but you gotta have the initial pressure. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you'd have low pressure, the pressure but it, drop. There's a natural pressure drop when it goes up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so actually, that, it's the cold water. It's the cold water that's w- weak. The hot water is strong. <laughs> Because the, it expands as it rises. Well, no, I think the reason is the cold water, for some reason, is coming from the. It's coming from the, the hot water is coming from the basement, and I guess it's probably where the water heater's at. Oh yeah, yeah. he's he's yeah. got a he's got steam heat in his. But place. I think the cold water really? comes from the roof. Really? Yeah, yeah. Well, you would think that you'd have great pressure. I mean, this is a, this is a, this is this is. Well, you know, this building probably has galvanized plumbing. Mm-hmm. And it, it corrodes and rusts from the inside, yeah. and it slows the pressure and volume down. I like my ar- it's yeah. like my arteries. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but, I mean, it's a great old building, and we love the building, and we love the apartment, and we're just so happy we're going to get to stay here. And I thank everybody involved. My lawyer was magnificent, I mean, to watch him work. I didn't know what he was doing. I thought he, I thought he was hurting our case, and he was helping our case. I, you can't tell in a courtroom what your lawyer is actually doing you know but he said leave me alone don't worry i'll take care of it all right and he did you wow. know uh the next day we came in and um we we're told uh, you know how i found out i the lo- the landlord not the lawyer for the landlord but the landlord came over to me and said we're g- they're going to make a deal with you today, and we're going to give you a lease at blah, blah, blah. There's so much, and blah, blah, blah. And the, you'll come out to Brooklyn, and we'll sign it, okay? And I'm going, what? I don't know. This is, My lawyer hasn't even told me they made a deal yet, and yet I find out from the landlord. So uh, we found out that, you know, if we were willing to accept the deal of giving him this money, if we that we'd settle the whole thing, and... Uh, I'm telling you, you know, it, uh, we figured that between the, the money we're paying him and the money we paid our lawyers, uh, over the last uh, eight and a half years, we paid about, oh, I think $1,800 a month rent. Okay. So, so that, you know, we came out okay. You know. Well, they're called sharks. Hmm? Oh, so they're called sharks. Yeah, well, I'll tell you. They're on the bloody water for a while, and then all of a sudden they go, okay, it's all over. Uh, yeah, well, uh, well, the thing is, this you know, I, I see the value of having paid for a good lawyer, all right? Because we're still here. You know, yep. if we had a mediocre lawyer, uh, well, they, they'd just figure out some kind of deal where we had to move out in six months, you know, or something like that. It was wonderful. This guy, this guy, this lawyer was the best. And the, the team he has, we had two lawyers in the courtroom with us yesterday and the day before. In fact, throughout the whole trial, we always had two lawyers. Everybody else only had one. So, you know. Uh, and, and, but, but, you know, it, what gets me is that, and, and Josh would probably be, in, you know, in, have an opinion on this, is what it costs for the average human being to go into a, into a court of law. You know how people say, don't do that to me or I'm going to sue you. <laughs> so go ahead. Have a good time. Okay. Um, but just the fact that they sue you, I mean, the fact that this guy was suing us meant we had to get somebody to defend us. Mm-hmm. And they never get anybody to take a contingency either. Uh, you know, I don't want to pay a contingency, and I'll tell you why. Because that's what you get, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah, they're going to work hard to try and make enough money to make enough money for themselves, but you, 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 can't, you haven't got the best lawyer you could lay your hands on. Because a really good lawyer won't take a contingency. Yeah. You know, he goes to work, he wants to get paid for it. As well he should, you know. So I... Boy, what, what a difference a week makes. Last week you were bitching about all the money you spent on this lawyer and and you didn't like him and all no, that. No, I, 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 I didn't say I didn't like him. I said that I was... I have I had problems with, uh, with things that were going on. But, um, you know, I always liked the lawyer. I don't think if I implied that, I certainly didn't want to imply that. 
but just that I was unhappy with the way things were going, you know. And um, uh, but uh, he turned out to be the best possible lawyer I could have laid my hands on. The guy is it like the guy is an artist, all right. Mm -hmm. Uh, and he was doing things that I went, what the fuck is he doing that for? You know, wow, no, come on, you're hurting my case. You know, and he just said, just leave, uh, you know. Didn't he tell you he cool. had Tourette's? Hmm? Didn't he tell you he had Tourette's? No. No, <laughs> no. but I mean, he, yeah, he was, a, he was really, uh, no, I didn't, I didn't, I don't think I implied that last week, Alan. That okay. wasn't what I was trying to say. What I was saying was, is that you just wonder after all this time, you know, you're going to get any yeah. resolution. And the fact that we were going into court to do a whole court thing, mm. you know, but it even got that far, you know, it should have never gotten that far. But yeah. uh, at every, every uh, place along the way, he didn't try to prolong it, you know. Plus, in most cases, I didn't have him as a lawyer physically. I had other lawyers from his office. Um, and uh, finally, the lawyer that I did have from his office, who was very good, uh, left, and I didn't know what to expect with this guy. And he, and he turned out to be, what I saw yesterday, yesterday, in the last two days in the courtroom showed me the artistry of a good lawyer, you know. Oh, do you know what the bill's going to be for the last couple days of uh, court appearance? Um, to tell you the truth, he knew that we were upset that the price was getting higher and higher and higher and higher and that we'd paid a hundred thousand dollars already and he says i know you paid a hundred thousand dollars already he said i have my assistant he said he bills out at 325 an hour uh you will only have to pay him you don't have to pay me i'll do the rest of the do, rest of the case uh for free oh, no, no, no. For, yeah well yeah i think he knew he was going to be out of there after two days you know he he wanted to get out of there so two thirds, <laughs> yeah. So I, I I think maybe it'll cost us another well four thousand maybe for the last couple of days in in lawyers fees at the most. So you know I'm I'm very happy. You know it really uh, it really came out a positive uh, a positive yeah. outcome. And I you know I uh, uh, again um, Alan Alan loves to put words in my mouth, but I don't believe I said that last week about him. I was just saying. I don't know what's going on here. This is very frustrating, you know. And, uh, my, you know, and I, as I say, you know, I mean, I watched this guy go to work and do stuff that even I was being shocked watching, you know, because you're attacking, attacking my landlord. Oh, my God, I got to live with these guys if I win this case. And as it turned out, he got nothing but respect for doing it, you know. Yes wondering what did he say to the landlord's representative that uh well it was a whole bunch of stuff about about you know you say that this thing said that you did this and you did that and you know it was it was just questioning what was there um uh, pieces of uh, you know proof that they had that certain work had been done and that uh, uh my lawyer said well when was this signed and you know he was he was attacking him and really nailing him, really nailing him, and doing the work really for the other side of the of the landlord. I mean, he was making the other side a case for the other side. Right. And I'm going, what is he doing that for? But I found out the next day the reason he was doing that is all the parties involved did not want my lawyer in that case anymore. You know, and and it was a masterful thing to see. Uh, you know the, the the lawyers for the guy who was suing us. Um, he didn't. He's. They certainly didn't want him to continue any longer, uh, and, and and perhaps then take their client and put him on the stand and do the same thing he did to this guy from the landlord. And uh, it was just that he got the respect of everybody there, <coughs> plus the fear of everybody there as well. Which it, it was it was masterful. It was like a, a wonderful. It was like a ballet. Well, you got forty three people that like to hear your story of woe. Really, woe. Yeah. Whoa. But anyway, but on the in the end, I want to say my my lawyer was just. I mean, I just I I walked away 
just absolutely in awe of him. You well, know. Now, now that this is over, what else are you going to have to talk about? Well, I, you know, I didn't talk that much about this, you know, well, mainly uh, because while it was going on, how do you talk about it? You know, you're going to get, you know, I could only screw myself over, you know. So I didn't really talk about it much. I let everybody know it was happening, you know, yeah. and that I was not happy with how long it was taking, you know. I mean, come on, eight and a half years? Yeah. You, somebody can commit murder, go on trial, and, and be convicted in less time than that. And, and be out and of jail. Yeah. And executed. <laughs> and, and either executed or, 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 or get out on parole. Right. You know, I mean, eight and a half years is ridiculous. Just ridiculous, yeah. And uh, and and then we had a oh I don't know the, fir the first part of the trial on 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 Wednesday was just uh, a a hearing to see if everybody could come to terms with each other, and the judge gave an opinion of what maybe he felt should be done and the various scenarios and and uh, uh, w then we meet with the lawyer we meet meet with the judge and you know that's where we decided. We'd be willing to give up some money if the deal. If we just wanted it to go, they want. They kind of wanted to get us out of the case. You were done, you know. I mean, well, I mean, we should never have been in it in the first place. But yeah. it, it's now an easier case for the two parties, right, to go at each other than to have this third party over here that's sitting there licking their balls in the corner. You and know? they can't sue you again, right? Uh, this is no, it's over. Over. It's absolutely over. The judge deemed the here's my order. Then, blah 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 blah, and the landlord agrees to give you this for this, and he agrees to take uh, so much money and release you from the uh, release himself from the apartment. You know, so was, no, no appeals for these guys. No appeals, N not on this. Now, yeah. when when they go at each other, it may come out one way or another, and I think I don't care I care which way it's going to come out. These guys are going to appeal. And you know yeah. what you don't want to do? You don't yeah. want to go to appeal. Yeah. Because if you go to appeal, that's that's a really expensive process. Yeah. And it, and you know, uh and you maybe you'll win on appeal. But you know, by the time you're through, you got no money left anyway. Right. And if you got a and if you're in the apartment, <laughs> you got possession and you're paying rent and you got a lease, you know, what's he what's he going to appeal? Was oh, he he's going to appeal how much he owes the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but I mean, no, but I mean, he's going to appeal. To, uh, somebody, if somebody's going to lose, okay, and somebody, I'm sure. I mean, they were already talking about it in the courtroom. Are going to appeal. So this thing for them could go on for another ten years, you know. And I mean, it's ridiculous. All it is is a is a rental deal, okay. Yeah. It's not like. Uh, uh, you know, a major a major case that's going to go down in the annals of legal jurisprudence. So it becomes a pissing match. It, it, yeah, it's a, it's a very expensive pissing match. It's over for us, and I thank everybody involved for, at least where we were concerned, coming to their senses, and uh, the landlord for being very cooperative and immediately giving us the, the proper deal, the proper rent for the rent-stabilized apartment. Um, Without arguing about it, without arguing about it, and the guy who sued us, uh, I have to say uh, only nice things about him in the end because he did come up and 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 congratulate us and said, you know, I really I really would have loved the apartment, but if I couldn't have it, I'm happy happy that you have it. So uh, this yeah. wasn't the Stockholm syndrome, right? No, uh, no. That you like him now. No, I listen. I liked the guy initially. Yeah, uh, I just as I told him, I said, you know, it's really nice for a change to be able to talk to you without looking over a table and scowling at you and having you scowl back. Yeah, you know, because we were enemies at that point. Once it was over, you know, we went back to that relationship we had before the whole thing started, which was a very amiable, you know, relationship. So you know, what 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 what, you, Alan? Yeah. So the news flash is the House passed the uh, the bill and it's going on to Biden. It's only one billion now, right? Uh, it's less than that. It's half a billion. 
Really? I mean, well, it's 550 well, billion. Is that the inf- is that the infrastructure thing? Yeah. Okay. So it's only he wanted 1.7 trillion, and he ended up with 550 billion. It, 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 didn't the Republicans agree to a better, de- a bigger deal than that? For- yeah, but the the Republicans actually voted. It didn't go along party lines. <laughs> so I, the Republicans voted. Some of them voted yes. I think nine, nineteen is what it's supposed to be. Well, what's wrong with the goddamn Democrats? I mean, they 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 hate Biden. What what's the story here? I don't get it. I just stop. I, no I stop watching the news all. We got Munchkin in there that that stalls the thing all the time. Hey, why don't you uh, you know ask the people of Virginia what's wrong with the Democrats? They'll tell you. I don't think the Virginia thing is an indication of anything. What it's an indication of is Terry McAuliffe was governor of that state for two terms, and people don't like people to have a dynasty going, you know? So uh, one, one term. Was, was it one term? Yeah. And then he's coming, he came back and went for another term. You know, I looked at McAuliffe and I said, what a lousy candidate. He was. You know? He, he had it in the bag until he shot himself in the foot. <laughs> What he did was he said uh, that parents have no say, should have no say in the education of their children, hmm. and that and and uh, I, ag- uh, I agree. Yeah. Well, I don't agree. <laughs> yeah. no, no, I agree. I think that that's that why certainly certainly the 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 uh, uh, people who are in charge of figuring out how your kid should be taught are better experts at that. Parents don't know what their kids need in school. They have You're no idea. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me let me go to Brian Neary. He's a father. He's got a kids got kids in school. Do you think you know better than the teachers on how to teach your kids? <laughs> that's a bad question. Yeah, oh, huh? because I mean, we, you know how you know how kids what you know the, these guys have homework and stuff like that, and I see the homework and I'm like, why they you know they teach you the stuff you'll never use it in life. Obviously, I think there's a lot of stuff that we think they should be taught. You know, mm-hmm. but not the curriculum, you know, like history and all that stuff. But I want them to know some other classes, you know, like, you know, uh, other types of common sense stuff, like getting jobs and stuff like that, other than some of the stuff they're being taught. But I don't want to be there and say, no, they should know this about history and this about history. What well, do you want them to get to take classes on uh, repairing the McLaren? Something like that, washing and waxing. Oh, there you go, washing. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, it. it uh, I, I just think that it, what the problem was here is that they're saying we want we want to have say so over what our kids are taught. Well, I'm sorry, you know, that's not how schools work. You know, they didn't agree with what the kids were being taught. Critical race theory for the one. kids weren't being taught critical race theory. That's, that's a fucking lie. That's the only thing they're bitching about. According to these parents who were sitting in on those Zoom uh, classes. That's the only thing. That's the only thing they were, That's you're the right. the only thing they're bitching about. It was enough. What you is, know? We, uh, oh, defi- we, somebody please define critical race theory to me. What is that? It, it's, uh, I'm, I'm good and you're bad. Uh, and you're bullshit. Bitch. That is not critical that's not, race. That's not what I you're understand. Bad because you're white and you're bad because you were born that way. That is not what is taught, it, and it's not being taught in any k- k- kindergarten to twelfth grade class anywhere in the whole fucking country. It's no different than the evolution argument from before. Very good, very good. Yeah, yeah. it's no different. It's just a different. Evolution line. was right, and critical race theory. Oh, here we go. Here we go. You don't even know. You here can't even go. define it. Define what critical it's race theory. Only there well, define to uh, define you. critical race theory. Charlie wants you to define it. Just I another did. argument. It's just another argument. I did. I gave you an example. I gave you one. one. You remember uh, when uh, uh, people were getting down on their hands and knees and washing the feet of uh, of minorities? You remember that? Well, that's just no, an nobody's argument. Nobody's being taught to do that in class. What does that well, have to do with what we're talking about, Phil? It has a lot to do with what you're talking about. It's the attitude, and, and what they're doing is they're saying that what you're doing uh, because of the way you were born, you're wrong, and and you should be ashamed of yourself. That is not critical race theory. You yeah, well, you tell me. All right, hold on a second. Hold on a second, <laughs> Phil. Phil, hold on. Okay, let what? Charlie 
Tell Char me Char what he thinks. Char Charlie, critical what, what's critical race theory? You give me a textbook? Uh, critical race theory is taught as a graduate level class to law students. It is not taught in grade school. Nobody's teaching grade school kids to hate themselves because they're white. Correct. Don't think that that's right because there's a lot of parents that are saying that that's not the case. Is this a conspiracy? Those are fucking racists that are making shit up. Is it a conspiracy? So now it's racist. You know, so don't you think that uh, the the other way around is well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. To begin with, Charlie is saying that it is not taught in high schools. It is taught oh. only in in colleges and universities. It's Correct. Not even college and, and yeah. graduate school. It's taught the lawyer, and it's an elective. It's not even you don't have to take it. Every so, every, in other words, what they're doing is they're bringing up. But let me let me try and and and, and Kevin, you can correct me on this, but. What they're doing is they're bringing up critical race theory as a straw dog, basically. Yeah. That it doesn't exist yeah. in these schools, and uh, and and uh, it only exists but, in colleges and universities. And, he, and that's where... That, in the college. I haven't heard of anything in the high school, in the high school level. Mm -hmm. And uh, all I've heard is it's college, and it's been discussed in the college level. It's definitely not in the elementary level. Is, well, I don't understand where this is coming from. People yeah. are thinking that it's going to go to that level, but it's not. I and people are paranoid that it's going to go to that level, and it's not. I think it's ignorant to say that your argument is that you never heard that it was. That's okay, okay, let's just say that I haven't heard it because my daughter is in that system. Sorry. <laughs> well, I, I, my I, bad. I, <laughs> Uh, who are her in that? My system. daughter doesn't go to school all through the country, but my system, you know, between here and the Bay Area, okay, that's a general area. Let me ask you this, Phil. You have two. You had two daughters. Were they ever taught critical race theory? Uh, they're eight years old. Now. It wasn't invented then. Uh, it wasn't invented by the Republicans then. Yes, uh, Jack. <laughs> to be here. Hey, Phil. You define critical race theory for me as a black man. Ball, your court. I got something to come back with you. Hey, hey, because uh, I am white. Uh, well, and, Proven. And <laughs> I have my case now for the prejudice and the uh, problems that you and your people have encountered mm -hmm. over the last couple of centuries. All right, now, now the question is: historically, who did it to us black people? Dutch. Good no. God. No, really every couldn't. European country, with the exception of uh, Lithuania, had something to do with the stealing and hijacking of black people from Africa. I'm sorry. Well, that's who, who stole who stole those slaves in Africa to the to the okay. Dutch trade. Hold on, hold on, hold, hold, hold on a second, both of you. Really Ross, uh, uh, Manuel, yes, you had your hand raised. Yeah, um, I was just going to ask, did someone explain to the Australian what your guys are talking about? And then I realized um, what it, what actually critical race theory means. I don't know, I finally figured it out. <laughs> so what because you... I'd never heard of critical race theory before hearing in the United States, and I didn't realize what it was. And I realized, uh, I, I, you and I don't really have an idea about it. Um, now, again, this is based on what I've just googled so correct me if i'm wrong google those all particularly jack and uh, particularly correct me if I'm wrong but it's focusing on how race equates to inequality yeah, or is it relating yeah. to how historical um events put upon minority groups have I'll resulted make, in current sense. situations it has to do with power. Who has power, who maintains power, who gets power, and how they get it. Now, Phil Meyer, you brought up that canard about black people being sold into slavery by other black people, just like the British did with Brits, just like the Irish did with Irish. So oh, it's another uh, because they did it and these guys did it, then it's it's okay, or that makes it uh, any better. No, but I'm saying it's part of American history. Yeah, but it was the Brits. It's part of American history. It was the Dutch. Oh, so that's what they're referring to. Okay, okay, 
I get it now. Right. See, what's interesting is the guy in Australia has a hard time comprehending it because they never even brought that up in Australia. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That, I, I, uh, so Alex, I will counter that. We actually do have critical race theory in Australia, but it's relating to how there is social, health, and economic inequalities with our indigenous population. Mm -hmm. And brought on by 275 years of institutional racism from government and health agencies mm -hmm. and what and how we look at it is how can we then bridge the gap so we there's, there's a, a economic policy that we have it's called closing the gap it basically means trying to improve the financial inequalities the health inequalities the employment inequalities of our indigenous population mm -hmm. who are on average 40 years dying you know dying 40 years sooner than our other populations mm -hmm. they don't have the access to the financial uh, uh, advantages that non-indigenous people do they have worse health outcomes they have worse financial outcomes and how we can fix that mm -hmm. by tailoring things specifically to them so it sounds like you've made a tremendous okay. step forward that we in this country have not done now to clarify something for phil meyer just because i've been black for over 70 years forgive me phil i didn't notice i didn't know okay. Oh, don't worry, I didn't notice you either. Now look, the history of slavery on this planet, usually, is that, yes, people with more power enslave other people. In Africa, tradition there was, my tribe attacks your tribe. If I win, I enslave your people. Now, where it gets squirrely, where it gets squirrely in this country. Unlike anywhere, well, let me put it this way, on this hemisphere, where it gets squirrely. Get to the point. Is, I'm getting there, pray with me. Uh, where it gets squirrely is the concept of slave for life. Look, like, I, I watched a movie and I had no idea the theme of this movie was actually going on in real life. It was called Hotel Rwanda. Yes. And, and I saw what one group of people did to another group of people, even yes. though they lived, they that's, were married. It's called civil wars in various countries. Well, that's, you know. that's what in this country. At the risk of this turning into the, the Phil and, and, and Jack show, um, uh, I, I just want to throw this out to the whole group. Is not critical race theory a Republican construct? Oh, yeah. You know, I never heard that term until the Republicans brought it up. <clears throat> yeah. yeah and, so, and so, therefore, if it is a construct by a group of people, uh, can't we kind of argue that uh, it's a myth and that it doesn't really exist? Well, it's conspiracy, right? It, is that no, that it doesn't exist. Uh, because well, what, because everybody, is, quite a few people it, here have said that it does not exist in in high schools. It doesn't exist in grade schools. It does exist in colleges and universities. Okay, I, wait, 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 yes, uh, 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 our friend from Australia. In in that case, Alex, it wasn't so much that critical race theory doesn't exist, but more the teaching of it at an an elementary school level doesn't exist. Because mm -hmm. I'm I'm, I'm seeing sources back from like the 1980s where. Like the O.J. Simpson case was a, a it was a factor of critical race theory. Mm -hmm. Like Johnny Cochran used it in his defense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought it was the glove. But I think the term critical race theory I haven't heard until recently. Yeah, it was nineteen ninety four when that first gained popularity. Yeah, well, uh, 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 Patrick, I'm trying to get to some of the people who haven't been talking. Patrick, yeah. no, it's not a Republican flashpoint or whatever you want to call it. Critical race theory is a body of legal scholarship and academic movement of civil rights scholars and activists who seek to examine the intersection of race and law in the United States and to challenge mainstream American approaches to racial justice. Mm -hmm. And it originated in the 1970s and through the 80s so it's not anything new and it was started by civil rights lawyers and that sort of thing in academia so it isn't republican crap it's not trump stuff it's real it's taught 
it just debated on where it taught. That's yeah. all I have to say on it. That's what the Republican crap is. A Republican crap is complaining that it's being taught in grade school and high school. It's That's a dog Republican whistle. crap. It's a dog it's... whistle to get Republican voters out to vote. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Good, good and it's a good dog whistle. I'm not opposed to you using it. Just admit that you use it, and let's be bold with each other. About no, but it. but you can't, Jack. Be reasonable. You can't admit that that because you want people to believe it, not to think it's something you're telling them because you want them to vote for you. you and know? it's also if you're against it, it's acknowledging that you believe that racism is isn't bad. Well, first of all, racism in this country is as American as a Chevrolet V8 and an apple pie. Right. You know, I tell the story of my dad, who was, for his time, a rather successful man. And he got upset when some folks who were white from Oklahoma moved across the street from us in an integrated neighborhood. And he said to my mother, and I swear to you this is true, he said, Ruby, there goes the neighborhood because that guy's from Oklahoma and drives a pickup. Hmm. We can all be bigots. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, um, um, I just, as I say, I, I never heard the term until just recently. You know. Yeah, well, they, they even interviewed people at the schools where they were protesting and they said, do you realize that it's not taught here? And they said, yeah, but we just don't want it taught anywhere. I never heard well, that. Yeah, but, but by bo voting for a guy for governor is not going to prevent that, you know? I mean, no, uh, it's not to allow it taught in those schools. Plus, he's going to give parents the, uh, the ability to choose private schools, uh, vouchers, and. Uh, and you know why that's done? You know why that's done, Phil? Yeah. Uh, that's done because the unions are too powerful. No, uh, no. no. That Phil. was done in the South to keep schools segregated. That's exactly yeah. the reason why. Yep. Look, uh, schools... Australia has been... Want to go... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, 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 let Ross talk here. Ross? I want to say that since about 2004, 2005, uh, Australia has been teaching critical race theory in primary school, and so elementary school, hmm. uh, as part of our way of addressing... The historic abuse, uh, you know, neglect and abuse and atrocities to our indigenous population. Um, do we extend it to other minorities? No. Have other minorities? Sure. Well, we're as multicultural as the United States is. <laughs> I, I, but I, what I, I can we have identified, though, is that this one group is more economically and health and, and employment disadvantaged than other groups. Well, mm -hmm. I can prove to you what I'm talking about. I'm going to ask you this question. How much, how big a check would somebody have to write for you to give up being white and European and become black? How big a check? 450000 to the people that were coming over the border. I, That's hey, another listen. lie. No That's lie. another lie. Yeah, that's right. If, if you're in the Southwest, those folks that are coming across the border, they were here before any of us were. That's correct. Uh, <laughs> that's I, correct. We were here uh, 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 before uh, last year. You know. Big pardon. We we stole we stole most of this country from yeah. other people. We bought. It. No, we didn't buy it. To, try no. and tell try and tell the American uh, the indigenous population. That they were sold, they sold their land. They didn't. You don't want to give your apartment up because the twenty-four dollars in beads uh, that was paid for Manhattan. All Island. I'm saying, all I'm saying, Phil, Phil, okay. Phil. Bottom line in the whole thing is that uh, no, you're absolutely wrong. I mean, most of the uh, land in this country uh, was taken in one way or another, away from another group of people. It was like the mob. <laughs> it was like the mob. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that Phil, calm down, Phil. Calm down, Phil. Calm down, Phil. I, I'd like to see some other people talk here, yeah. like Kevin, and if uh, Jeff wants to say something, yeah. go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, I, I want to just say one thing. I know a lot of black people. I know, you can hear that, right? Yeah. I, I know a lot of black people who are friends, and they have kids, and they're growing up. And you know what? Their kids can speak 
and, and articulate much better than their parents can. Yeah. That's, and you know what? Every year they get better and smarter and well-educated more and and when and you that, talk and that's their, also yeah. that's also because because they have been given this opportunity finally you know yeah, up until oh. now the idea was don't let them don't let them learn don't let them read books i mean when they were slaves they were couldn't read books at all you know yes. why did why Phil. didn't it work on alan what why didn't it work on Alan? He's not getting better every year, and he can't oh, read. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, any comments, Josh? You've been quiet tonight, and we always respect your opinion. I mean, CRT, if you will, is... I mean, it's not a huge concern of mine. Listen, I mean, I have two graduate degrees in the field of history. I've looked into it for a lot longer than even the time that I was in college, okay? So it was a pursuit of mine even before it was a formal education. Mm -hmm. I follow probably all the leading historians that you can think of on social media. Mm -hmm. I've attended dozens and dozens of book talks and lectures, and I've watched hundreds more. And CRT is not something that historians talk about. It, it just isn't. I mean, historians did not start to talk about CRT until maybe 16, 18 months ago is about the first time mm -hmm. that I saw it spoken about in those terms because it was beginning to be bounced around by politicians on, you know, different sides of the playing field. So I'm sure that certain what you'd have to understand is that it would encompass many different things and certain elements of that are probably taught here and there at different levels, but not out of some like pushed down, you know, master plan or something. It's just because those elements now exist because the majority, probably the vast majority of, uh, of historians have come to accept that as the interpretation mm -hmm. of our history. So, for example, I think most historians, okay, basically all would agree that um, even still now, blacks in America are still catching up because for an, an enormously long period of time, there was racism that existed and a lot of it was institutionalized, okay? They couldn't simply go to the courts and have their rights, or I'm sorry, their wrongs made right because even the courts were racist. Or they couldn't run to a police officer and report something and get help because even the police officer was, I mean, that's accepted, you know, fact, if you will, or whatever. But nothing of, of outside of that generally agreed stuff is being taught to people in the third grade or anything. I mean, you know, well, well, how this how this whole how this whole discussion started was that uh, we were talking about the Virginia uh, election, and I mm. think the only thing that lost the Virginia election uh, was the fact that uh, what's his name, uh, the Democrat, well, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, just did a terrible election. Just had that people, even people who are a member of that party, look at someone like the person that they ran in that state, yeah. and even I say, <laughs> Well, Terry, wow, Terry McAuliffe, really I, I looked you know? at Terry I mean, McAuliffe, I looked at Terry right. McAuliffe, and I heard Terry McAuliffe, and I said, he's going to lose. Yeah. He's going to lose. Mean, and, and you would be, you know, I shouldn't say you would be surprised, but you would be open-minded to know people like Phil or them. Listen, I know people that are historians, very well-known, Pulitzer Prize winners, etc., who are... I'm going to say, you know, they're, they're not voting for Trump. They're not voting for Republicans or whatever. And I've seen some of them call CRT stupid. I yeah. mean, I mean, well, to me, CRT I've, used to mean a television tube. Yeah. 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 I mean, I've, I've, I've just I've, I've seen a few of them, you know, say that they think it's, you know, stupid. The, the argument, not just the argument about it, but they're like, we don't need you know, mm -hmm. to be looking at it that way. And I guess yeah. lastly, I would just say, even if it was taught, okay, mm -hmm. even if critical race theory was 
100% taught everywhere and you didn't want it to be taught, okay, that's fine. But I would like for you to remember that it's called a theory. So if we're actually teaching our children to think critically and understand, then they should be smart enough to know that this is a theory. Something that is a theory is not taught as fact. Well, the only the only argument the only argument against that that I would have with you is for years that same argument was used about Darwin and the theory of existence uh, of evolution, uh, and uh, so you know it, 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 it's a slippery slope there. Yes, quickly, right, but, Jack. But my point is, we should be free to teach any mm -hmm. theory in in broad terms so that people can yeah. get oh absolutely a, a large view of. Right. The world. Uh, and quickly, the Jack, because he's got to go do a show. I got to go do a show here yeah. in a minute. You know, you know the mistake that Black America did with this. We let the general populace know what Black people were talking about amongst ourselves. We were the, all of this stuff that you're hearing. I heard when I was six, seven, and eight years old. Nothing new, but we made the mistake. Of believing. Well, what were you talking about? Hey, that's a fine-looking white chick over there. Well, that was one of them. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you, Jack. I appreciate it. Hey, buddy. It. Okay. Get you in a bit. Uh, hey, he's doing uh, the intersection right after this. Can I just say, this. back on the Virginia thing, yeah. that McAuliffe was ahead three weeks ago. He shot yeah. himself in the foot. And you're looking at a state that is a majority. It's a blue state. It's not yeah, a I know. purple look, state. Look, but I think, I think McAuliffe lost it he lost it because he lost it okay you know yeah. uh, i don't think it's a sign that suddenly the rest of the world is going republican although i gotta tell you with the way the democrats are acting right now they're asking for their hat to be handed look, to look them. at new jersey the guy uh Ch Chitarelli was within a, a hair's breadth of winning that thing but he didn't and, win. But he didn't win it. Well, it doesn't matter. It, it look look how many people voted for him and how many people voted for the incumbent. Yeah, he was this it's close. It, it really, so it, well, it, there there are a certain amount of people who will, there are certain because that proves there are a certain amount of dumb people who will vote for a racist. Right. Uh, anyway. He's not a racist. Oh yeah. Oh yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. worst kind. Um, yeah. Anyway, what? He, he was he was in the assembly, wasn't he? Uh, you know, let me see here. Does, does, that uh, doesn't make him a racist. Kevin, no. did you have something you wanted to say, Kevin? No. Huh? No. No. Oh, How okay. is this well, not really because, because there are some democratic mistakes that are being made. Okay. I mean, if Phil's looking for an argument on that, I'm, I'm not here to defend him. It's not like it's some binary choice, like people are all of a sudden all against Democrats and they're just all going to vote for Republicans in this big wave. I mean, a lot of people they're, they're don't against, like, they're a against. lot of people don't like Republicans either. I mean, no, no it's not it, a Republican Democratic thing. They don't That's what I'm trying to say, but they I mean, don't like the way the government's being run right now. They don't okay. like the things that are going on. They don't like Biden. Look at his look at his uh, approval rating. Uh, he Yeah, he, they're he, about 10 points higher than Trump ran for about three and a half. I mean, it doesn't matter because well, Trump was being I mean, wait, wait a minute, Josh. Trump was being okay, unfairly targeted. Okay, that's enough. Targeted. That's enough. And, and no, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. Right no, he there wasn't. Was, no, he wasn't. Your one statement right there was, they don't like Biden. That's what you're talking about. Right, but Trump was being unfairly targeted, what? and we know this now because of the Durham uh, investigation, and we know oh, we do. Uh, we do that, know it. Uh, we don't know it, Phil. Oh, yes, we don't we know. know. Trump. Trump was a fucking crook, Phil. We know the report. He was a fucking DCA. crook. We know that the he DCA was a crook. Was made. He up. was a crook. That he no, was racist. a crook. Nothing How long do I have to say he was a crook? He is still a crook. It was true. And we want to and see his ass in jail. Anyway, hey, Paid thank you. by Hillary thank, Clinton. Thank, thank, and he's oh. coming back. <laughs> don't make, don't, 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 don't down a woman whose husband was, is in the why, hospital. Why is it okay? Right out of the uh, hospital. For, why is it okay for parents to go to the school board meeting and decide they don't, they want their children to wear masks, okay. but no governors can overrule that but they can also go to a school board meeting and say we want this to be taught and that's that's encouraging yeah that's what they should okay hey, listen i gotta go the theme is okay. running and, and I, I have a boat i'm gonna run out of theme uh, uh phil thank you for being here this evening alan thanks to you
uh, and I'm trying to put words in my mouth. Uh, uh, Josh, thank you. Uh, and of course, uh, our old uh, pal uh, from Australia, uh, Ross Manuel. Uh, great to have you here. Always great to have you here. Uh, Jeff, thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Uh, Tony didn't say anything tonight. I enjoyed myself, though. Oh, okay, good. Good. T- Tony only says things to me on the phone. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and Brian, and Brian Neary, thank you for being here this evening. I know you didn't get too much in, but you, you had enough, okay? Thank you for being here. Charlie, always great to have you here. And you know, Patrick, you're my man. You know, so anyway. Everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go. That's our citizen panel for tonight, okay? I'm a little bit out of sync, but I won't be once I get rid of the uh, citizen panel here. It'll be a little better. It'll pick up. Uh, You know, I hate to be out of sync. It just doesn't look right. Anyway, that's it for tonight. I'm Alex Bennett. We'll see you on Monday for the uh, the pop-up show. And then back here again on Wednesday at 10.30, Eastern Daylight Time. In the meantime, uh, Eastern, is, no, Eastern Time. East, it's winter now. Uh, in the meantime, uh, uh, if you see her, tell her I love her. And please, you know, get a vaccination, all right? And if you don't, wear a goddamn mask. See you on uh, on Monday with the pop-up show at 4 o'clock. Bye-bye, everybody.